Hey there. Today I want to tell you about yet another proposal to outlaw certain types of speech in Canada. It's a new recommendation for both civil and criminal penalties on an unclearly defined term, residential school denialism. This is a new law that we don't need and that could actually lead to the chilling of investigation into residential schools. It could give the government authority to criminally sanction those who ask the wrong questions. And in our opinion, at the Canadian Constitution Foundation, it's unconstitutional. I can't wait to tell you all about it. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Christine and I'm the litigation director for the Canadian Constitution Foundation, a legal charity that fights for fundamental freedoms in Canada. I upload regular videos about our ongoing cases and about other interesting developments in constitutional law in Canada, like this one. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please hit like and subscribe below. It really helps my videos out a lot. Also, please remember that nothing in my videos is legal advice. If you have your own legal question or problem, consult your own lawyer. Our executive director, Joanna Barron, has written about this new proposal to criminalize certain types of speech, this residential school denialism, in the online publication, The Hub. I will link to that article in the description below so you can go and check it out. But basically, this proposal comes from a recent report. The report is called Searching for Missing Children and the Unmarked Burials. And it was a report put together by Kimberly Murray. That's the Independent Special Interlocutor for Missing Children and Unmarked Grave and Burial Sites Associated with Residential Schools. That, that is her title. She was appointed in June of 2022 after the identification of unmarked graves and burial sites at former residential schools. Now, Murray has recommended in her report that the government introduce civil and criminal penalties to combat what the report calls denialism. And to quote her, she says, there are significant gaps in legal protections and that denialists are attacking the credibility of survivors' truths about missing children, unmarked burials, and cemeteries at residential schools as sensationalist. Canada's Attorney General, David Lametti, is open to this idea. He said that Canada can look to other countries that have criminalized Holocaust denial and that the federal government is open to a legal solution outlawing residential school denialism. But what exactly is residential school denialism? What types of statements or questions would qualify for this criminal sanction that's being proposed? The fact is there is a complete lack of rigor and clarity in what constitutes denialism so that any project proposing to attach criminal sanctions to this denialism would be completely devoid of clarity and predictability, which are two basic stipulations of the rule of law. For example, would residential school denialism encompass the investigative journalism that Terry Glavin did in that bombshell investigation report he did for the National Post in 2022. Now keep in mind, in that investigation, which I encourage everybody to read, Glavin agreed that the government's residential school policy amounted to cultural genocide. He condemned the policy of residential schools, and he said that residential schools entailed brutal psychological, physical, and sexual abuse. But Glavin also found in that report that for all of the attention that this issue of the unmarked graves and burial sites had been given, a year after the announcements, not a single mass grave was discovered, nor any human remains unearthed. He wrote that not a single child among the 3,201 registered on the Truth and Re Reconciliation Commission's 2015 record of deaths was located. And Glavin also noted the caution that was urged by local Indigenous leaders who were actually the most involved in the sites in question. So Glavin's piece asked questions that are rightfully and somberly asked in the wake of a grim allegation like the one that has been made in this case about the discovery of unmarked graves of children. What remains were unearthed and how can they be connected with the existing historical records? What charges should be laid? Who will lead these efforts? But for asking these questions, Terry was made basically a persona non grata by the mainstream legacy media and he was condemned by many figures in the mainstream media. It was 
journalist Barry Weiss, who interviewed Glavin in her podcast, Honestly, that sum summarized this affair involving Glavin as showing what happens to a society when truth no longer matters. Now, in this report that recommended these criminal and civil penalties being imposed on denialism, the report quotes MP Leah Gazan for the proposition that, quote, denying genocide is a form of hate speech. That kind of speech is violent and re-traumatizes those who attended residential schools. But as we all know, hate speech is already criminalized in Canada, although defining the line between merely repugnant speech and hate speech is a famously difficult exercise and free speech defenders like those of us at the Canadian Constitution Foundation would be more comfortable if the state restrained itself to only dealing with cases of actual or threatened physical violence since it's particularly these gray areas that create a huge chill effect on open discourse. But Murray's proposal for criminalizing residential school denialism seems to go beyond that. It seems to go beyond hate speech, and it urges the adoption of new legislation that would conflate any critical discussion surrounding residential schools and unmarked graves with hate speech or pathological denialism. If the new law goes beyond what has previously been defined as hate speech, it is likely to be unconstitutional under Section 2B of the Charter, which protects even the most offensive and repugnant speech as long as it comes short of hate speech. Besides being unconstitutional, a law like this would just be illiberal and ill-advised. It raises the specter of driving anti-Indigenous racism underground where it will flourish and away from the disinfecting influence of open dialogue and discourse. For example, a lot of the discussion and commentary about residential schools that Murray apparently would like to target, you know, maybe that discourse is distasteful, but it is best responded to with rational argument rather than a criminal sanction. So I'll give you an example. There's, you know, a small fringe of the Canadian conservative intellectual movement that seem to be a apologists for residential schools. And I personally find these apologists to be very misguided. And in fact, it's odious. I think as conservatives, there should be great emphasis placed on the value of family, which is what was disrupted by residential schools, not to mention the terrible abuses of the individual rights of indigenous children who were abused in these facilities at the hands of the church and state. So an example of some of this is an op-ed that was published last year, where in the op-ed, the author meant, said that, you know, nobody has brought up the fact that enrollment in these schools was often voluntary or that the school had an impressive swimming pool. I mean, the comments like that are so appalling and misguided, and they really minimize the horrors that did take place at residential schools. Canada's policy of residential schools was unmistakably cruel and evil, and it stripped children from their families. It stripped their, their traditions, their religion, their communities, and any attempt to minimize this by pointing to the upsides of assimilation or the impressiveness of a swimming pool is completely wrong. But still, any law aimed at criminalizing those who refuse to admit that, that these schools inflicted harm would put comments like those within the realm of criminalization, when comments like those are really better dealt with through social condemnation and counter speech, like what I am saying right here. The practicalities of criminalizing residential school denialism also should be contemplated. If a law like this were passed and someone was prosecuted under it, it would effectively put residential schools on trial. We've seen this happen before. In the 1980s, Holocaust denier Ernest Zundel sat trial several times for his appalling and racist pamphlets. His trials effectively put the Holocaust itself on trial, with the Crown bringing in Holocaust researchers and survivors to support their case, while the defense put noted Holocaust deniers on the stand and cross-examined Holocaust survivors about the accuracy of their recollection. These trials gave Zundel a platform to bolster his case about Holocaust denial. It was a spectacle, it was unsightly, it was disgraceful. 
And that's not the kind of outcome that we want, so we shouldn't enact laws that make it possible. The solution to ignorance or prejudice in a free society can never be censorship. Attorney General Lametti is a celebrated legal scholar and was even the dean of McGill Law School. He knows full well that Murray's proposed law is a constitutional problem and he should put a halt to it. He shouldn't be flirting with this idea, but he is either because he supports it or because he thinks that the political optics are on his side. Now, as I said, Joanna of the CCF has written more about this. I encourage you to read her piece in the Hub. And if this proposal does make its way to the legislature, we at the CCF would oppose it. And if passed, we would challenge it. If you wanna stay up to date about what happens with this issue and in our other cases, you can sign up for our freedom updates at the ccf.ca slash freedom updates. And if you think there's someone who would enjoy this video, please share it with them. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and let's keep fighting for freedom in Canada.